Welcome to another edition of the Resilient Living Podcast, a show dedicated to improving quality of life for both people and planet through liberation and independence, moving from surviving to thriving and living life on your own terms. All right, this show is all about repurposing. And uh, I want to talk about wood pallets, couches, barbecues, all ways that you can start a business, ways that you can get free stuff. And why are and we live in such abundance that it drives me crazy where people's like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm like, yes, you can. You, with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of expertise, it's amazing uh, all the things that we can find on the internet, on YouTube, how to, do DIY. And that's what I want to get you guys uh, excited today because we need to repurpose stuff. It brings you joy. It could be this art form that, that brings purpose to your life. And actually, we need it because we, we can save the planet instead of sending all this stuff to the landfills. Why would we do that when we could repurpose it? Let's get into the first one, which is wood pellets. I, there, I don't even know how many uses there are for wood pellets. I just built myself a shed, a complete shed, guys. You're going to take the wood pellets and you're going to stand them up with the two by fours horizontal and you're going to nail these guys on top of each other. I find pellets that are actually four feet perfectly uh, wide and they're about 10 feet long. I don't think you guys are going to find these in very many places uh, other than a roofing yard, a roofing supply place. And these are the type of pellets they do not return. I don't know why. Actually, you can get out of some of these pellets I used to find up to seven two by fours in perfect condition, two by four by 10, seven of them for free. If we look at lumber prices right now, guys, have you ever checked it out? Seven two by fours, do the math. It's a lot of money, but it, it, there's so much. You can make patio furniture. You can make planter boxes, raised beds, a shed, as I said. I basically laid them horizontal <coughs> and I needed a pitch to the roof. So I just chalked the line from the top. Uh, basically, we had a four by uh, four by ten foot laid sideways, right on top of the deck. That was nailed down by the flat, the the, the two by four. I stacked another uh, uh, four by ten foot horizontal on top and nailed those two together. And what I did on the top area is I took the two by four off, the last one at the eight foot section, chalked the line to give myself some pitch to the roof, and then I just sliced all of the one by uh, sixes from the pallets off into this, this slanted angle, renailed the two by four onto those things. I did this within minutes uh, to the pitch, so I had something to put my roof rafters on, and there we go. We've got it down. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's so much you guys can do with this. If you are going to recycle wood pallets, I would recommend that you get a cordless uh, sawzall. If you're already in construction and you got one, get one of those high-powered ones, the, the, the uh, 20 volts. Uh, they really are worth their weight and money. I've trimmed trees with them, like prune trees and stuff like that, cut firewood. But you're going to want to get yourself a really good blade, and you want something that's going to cut through metal, specifically for metal. And you don't want the thin tooth. You want to get the big tooth metal and spend the money on uh, uh, these. There's a couple. I think there's one called the Diablo, and it's got these... Uh, um, uh, what do they call it? I can't graphite or something on the on the ends. Titanium. I can't remember, uh, but it's got a larger set of teeth. And those I can I've been cutting pallets for probably about oh three four months, like through the nails and stuff like that to separate the the two by fours. And I've had the same blade. It's probably done about 20, 30 pallets. So spend the money on a good blade and get yourself a blade that's about a foot long because you can kind of jab once you get used to it and you're savvy. You can actually bend that blade to get into places where usually it won't get. And you can just saw off uh, and separate these pallets. And that's basically what I do is I like to separate, uh, if you're, especially if you have a car, right? you don't have a truck, you can go get the four by uh, four foot pallets. You're going to want to shave off all of the wood um, right there on the spot. That way you can stack it all nice and neat in the back of your car. Because otherwise you're going to fit probably like, you know, if you have a trunk or something or a wagon, you know, or one of those four foot uh, bed uh, pickup trucks, which I don't know why they have. Why, why would you get a four foot bed? To me, eight foot bed all the way, all day, son. Um, but yeah, you could, that way you can chop everything up and you can make uh, uh, lots of room. You can take these and make birdhouses. I mean, you can start a whole business off of repurposing pallets. And by the way, I will say that they actually have these nice wood stains that, for pallets, uh, natural eco wood stains. So you can make beautiful things. Also, you'll want to know that there's a little label on the, sometimes stamped on the, uh, the pallets themselves. There's a kiln dried and one that is treated for anti-rot. 
Now, if you're wanting to build uh, something for your garden or something like that, or not wanting to get toxic stuff, you'll have to take a look at that, at, at the, the numbers. There's, there's a couple different stamps on there, but you can uh, Google uh, kiln dried uh, pallets or non-toxic stamps and just take a picture of that or write it down. And when you're finding your pallets, you'll find it uh, at the bottom corner somewhere where it'll tell you what kind of uh, treatment that, that wood pallets have had. <coughs> My next one is old couches. I used to have a girlfriend that would go and find old couches, free couches and stuff like that. What, what she'd do is she would strip these down and she'd reupholster them. And she would take these things, this was back in my 20s, and she would hammer in the little punk studs, right? That's where I came playing punk rock music. And uh, she would hammer these into the wood or uh, in any place that she can and design and make a punk couch, basically. And when she reupholstered this thing, she used uh, like zebra uh, fabric. So it has a zebra fabric all over this old couch. She did it all over the old cushions, you know, took away the old cushions, washed everything, and polished up the wood, restained it, sanded it and everything. And guys, some of these couches are made out of like oak and stuff like that, especially the old ones. That's why they're so heavy. They're built for to take a beating. So they're the, and a lot of people just end up throwing them away. Uh, well, you can imagine if you saw the zebra couch or leopard or something with punk studded uh, studs, you know, silver studs in it, you would look and go, well, this is a piece of art. This is something cool. That can go into a club or wherever. I can imagine that someone would pay probably, a, you know, a couple hundred bucks for something like that done right. So yeah, you can repurpose these things for yourself or take them out uh, and sell them. Uh, one of my favorite things to do, because I'm a dirt bag, right? <laughs> uh, back when I had uh, five acres of land that uh, I was living on, I actually built myself a large fire pit and I just got free couches from the neighborhoods uh, that, you know, not stuff that's sitting in an alleyway for a month, of course, but free couches. And uh, I live around a lot of wealthy people, right? So really nice stuff. And I would just take these things and throw them outside. I would nail a tarp to the back of them and I would roll this tarp up with a piece of pipe and it would sit right behind the couch when we when weren't using it or as chance of rain, I'd roll the tarp over and I set these things all up in a circle around the fire pit and guys, it was one of the most comfortable things to do. We had bats at nighttime. I actually even got a recliner that my grandfather, when he was living, would love to sit in, warm his legs by the campfire. Or my young daughter, uh, who still, uh, I have a special needs daughter, and she'll snuggle with me. And I used to rock her on the rocking chair outside, watching all the owls and the hawks and the change of the light, the sunset by a nice fire. And everybody was always comfortable. It was like the go-to spot. We used to sleep out there and watch shooting stars, you know, under a campfire on a couch. <laughs> so, yeah, repurpose. Uh, the other thing you guys can do, which I see a lot of, is, is barbecuers. People will have, I see a lot of them. And I mean really good expensive barbecuers. The reason why is the burning elements, the shield that goes over the flame, will burn out from excessive use or the grate, the, the grill will actually rot out. It'll rust, I think, because a lot of people don't know how to use barbecuers. When you're cooking meats and stuff like that or if you're cooking vegetables, always leave the oil on the grill. Clean it before you use it. That actually seals everything up. If it is clean, if you decide you have to clean it, spray it with some oil and then turn it on real quick so that it cauterizes around or whatever the word is that for the oil to, to dry and, and weld itself to the metal. That gives it a protective coating. Well, I'm actually kind of glad that a lot of people don't because guess what? People like you and I can actually go and clean these things up. You can actually order, all you need to do is order a new uh, uh, shield. They have them in parts. I know supply chain shortages right now is probably pretty crazy, but you can easily replace these things. Get yourself some stainless steel cleaner, uh, or some baking soda and water with some vinegar or something. Polish this whole thing up, degrease it and all that. Put it up on offer up for a hundred bucks, 200, 300 bucks. I've seen big ones, guys. The reason why I'm excited about this one is I've seen giant commercial grades, like the ones, the, the one that I've been using for the past five years of cooking all my food on. So yeah, there's all kinds of parts. All you gotta do is take a little uh, time to get savvy about these and you can do a whole barbecue flipping business. <laughs> Uh, something I should probably take in consideration. Uh, the other one, I don't know much about this one. My mom just turned me on as, um, she's getting bored as during quarantine and stuff like that. It's cardboard construction. You can go out and get yourself cardboard and you use these glues and stuff. You wet it, I guess. You press them together with some, some weights and you glue them together and make this thick, uh, form. And just like wood, you can create shelves, which she did, bookshelves that holds a lot of weight. 
And you could actually form little pieces as it stiffens out to actually hold for load bearing uh, um, uh, structure. So she's got a whole entire uh, bookshelf and art shelf thing already made all out of uh, recycled uh, cardboard. So I can imagine you can make doll houses. There's all kinds of use for cardboard. Uh, repurposing soups. Let's move and get a little diverse here. Uh, this is another one I actually learned from my mother, my grandfather, and my, my grandmothers. Is you can take soups and when you get bored of them, let's just say like actually I just made one the other day. It was cabbage soup. And for some reason the cabbage just did not settle right in my stomach. I was like, nah, I don't think so. But I took the, the uh, cabbage soup. And what you could do is the next day is you can add, say, in some um, um, carrots and potatoes. Now you have a carrot, potatoes, and cabbage. And as you eat everything, the, most of it, uh, the, what's left is your broth. Now you can go and add in some more potatoes. You could add in some chicken, like canned chicken meats and stuff like that. Throw some tomato sauce in there. Now you got this tomato-based soup. And throw in some onions and garlic and stuff like that. Uh, little chunks of whole beans. Uh, and when you're done with all that, take it and just make like a bean soup out of it. And when you're done with all of that and you got all this, this flavor, you can actually, if it's done right, take that, the rest of those juices and cook yourself some rice. Instead of using water to cook your rice, uh, it'll, the rice will absorb whatever beef or chicken flavor you have in their vegetables. And it'll actually infuse the rice with it. Uh, one of my tricks and one of my favorite things to do is cilantro lemon or cilantro lime uh, uh, rice with chicken broth. So same thing, guys. I will do pressure cook, say, a whole chicken or something like that to make crispy chicken. What I'll do is take that broth and when I'm done, strain it all out, and um, I'll cook my rice in it. The rice has the chicken flavor. When it's done, I'll add a little bit of ghee or some butter or, or some, like, chicken fat or something on top of that to, to, to kind of give some lubrication for the rice and some flavor or some better than bouillon, uh, salt, pepper, of course, squeeze of lime, and chopped up cilantro. Mix that all together. Just that by itself is just yummy. So there's so many things you can do with soups and stuff, your foods, to repurpose them. Soups is probably the best one that I can think of. It could just keep changing on a daily basis. And it saves you a lot of time, saves the planet, and saves your pocketbook. Um... Clothes patches is another one. My daughter, I've uh, started to punk her out. Uh, she's, she was getting interested in a lot of different music and stuff like that. And I said, you know what? You got to hear some good music. You got to hear some punk rock and some uh, system of a down and stuff like that. And what she did is uh, she started making jackets and pants and stuff. Uh, I try to get her all good stuff like Dickie's pants and, you know, punk rock looking style stuff. And what she's been doing is she's been getting uh, dental floss, which we're going to talk about next. And she'll uh, take these patches of like old shirts and stuff that say have like a, a skull. Uh, we have like these little, uh, what is it, Dia, Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead from uh, um, Mexican culture. I have these pants for my younger daughter, these stretchy pants. And they have little tiny cartoon skulls all over them. My oldest daughter, once the pants wore out and started tearing, she went and cut out these these uh, forms these these these, uh, um, these emblems and stuff like little skulls and she actually sewed them into her pants and her jackets so I thought that was really cool especially for kids to teach them this sort of mental uh, uh, mindset so I mentioned dental floss dental floss is a really good survival kit and I know it may sound gross but come on guys human up you know human up here when you're done flossing your teeth usually I get a length that's about a foot uh, long because it always slips out of my fingers well, what you could do when you're done is run it under the faucet, take your finger and, and rinse it off, just clean it quickly, toss it inside of a jar and keep it. What you can do is you can actually use it as sewing thread. Uh, my daughter, I was telling you, used it as sewing thread to go through the, the leather of her, or the whatever jacket, the thick jacket, it's not leather. But uh, she sewed on these patches with it and she's sewing up uh, backpacks and stuff like that. Um, so it's a good survival thing that I, I've been keeping for years. I just kept the whole uh, uh, spindle of, of fresh dental floss for myself. Uh, if you have a canopy that rips while you're camping or something like that, or your tent, uh, I said your, your shoes, there's so many things that have such this high tensile strength. Keep all those up and you can actually repurpose them. Uh, next one is dryer lint. Now I spoke about camping uh, and I spoke about uh, animal fats, right? And uh, what you can do is you can actually take all your lint that you have in the dryer or from uh, the uh, laundry mat and stuff like that, and you can make these little balls. What you're going to do is you're going to repurpose and save your egg crates, right, with the little dimples in them, and you're going to pack these full of, um, well, let's start off different here. Let's, let's take that lint and let's put this inside of a, a uh, cup, 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to melt some uh, uh, bacon grease uh, or Crisco, whatever you want to do, and, and just mix it in, massage it into the, um, the uh, lint. And what you're going to do is you're going to scoop these out and you're going to make little tiny balls of this stuff inside of a dryer, uh, I'm sorry, an egg crate. And let put them in the refrigerator, pack them all up, let them get nice and hard, then ziplock these things and just set them aside. And if you're like me and you're having fires, well, when I used to have a house where they allowed to have a fire pit, or you're camping or something like that, you can take these with you and very simply, without having to make kindle kindling, if you have enough Crisco fat or uh, uh, bacon grease on these things, you can light up these little lint balls. I mean, they'll light up uh, uh, by themselves, no problem, but the problem is they'll burn out. When you give them some fuel, like some fats in there, they'll actually stay lit like a little, small little torch. And now you can just start your fire uh, with ease. All right, next one, oh, the, I'll tell you another cool one with dryer lint is uh, take them and especially if it's got colors and stuff like that, just throw it outside your window. Throw it outside, the birds will actually pick it up and use it to make their nests. And it's really cool to look up. You can get ribbons and stuff like that, like discarded ribbons, uh, colors like pink and stuff. You know, if you have presents like after Christmas, I don't have that on my notes here, but just leave them outside and see what happens. The birds will actually take them and intertwine them inside their nests. It's just something really cool. Uh, pet food bags. I heard a story about a mother and a daughter taking dog food bags uh, and cutting them in half, uh, taking all the, you know, using, utilizing all the food and actually sewing these things up with a sewing machine and uh, using the scraps, making handles and making reusable grocery bags. And they actually made a business. The story was so cool that it was a mother and daughter that they were repurposing animal feed bags. And I, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I can find multiple uses for bags. One of the things you can do, but I'm not into this too much because I really don't like plastic, is you can actually take these bags, cut them in half, not really do anything with them, and uh, I'd maybe rinse them out. But you can flip these uh, um, upside down, and uh, you can actually fill them with soil, and you can actually grow plants out of them. Uh, I don't see any difference from buying plastic bags, the grow bags at, uh, offline or at your, your local gardening store, in contrast to using feed bags. So many, many uses. At least what I like to do when I have large bags like that is I'll use them as a trash liner in my trash can. And uh, I can, I, there's many, many things. I used to use them for the dog uh, scat that I would pick up. Um, I have dirty diapers having a special needs daughter so I can actually put those separate and at least have it to where it's a carrying vessel at least once. Um, the next one is five gallon buckets. And I think five gallon buckets, you can grow food out of them. You can capture rainwater. There's so many different uses. You can get two of them and you can actually make yourself a uh, wicking uh, bucket where basically the bottom bucket, which you don't do anything to, except for drill a hole about three inches uh, from the top or from the bottom. And you're gonna stick a nut, you're gonna drill holes all over the second bucket, all over the whole entire bottom. You're gonna set this inside the wicking, inside the hole bucket with a little hole drilled in it about three inches high. And you're gonna fill that reservoir up with water. And now you have yourself a self-watering container. Uh, there's so many uses for recycling. I use one as a trash can. And you can get, the reason why I say these things is that at bakeries and stuff like that, a lot of contractors, roofing contractors, and particularly they'll use acrylics coatings They'll use silicone, which is my favorite, which silicone, most of them uh, have an NSF approval, meaning that you can drink the water off the, uh, the, these coatings when they're placed on a roof. What does that mean in a five gallon bucket? Is that the silicone doesn't really stick to plastic, so you can go and peel the whole inside out and have this fresh, clean, brand new looking uh, five gallon bucket. And most of them are food grade buckets. The, uh, you can tell by the number. I think it was uh, three, uh, two, three, and five and the triangle uh, food grade don't quote me on that i think i might have got one of those wrong but now you have this free bucket you can stack them all up and you're getting them for absolutely free and you have multiple multiple uses i mean do the uh, use your imagination <laughs> um old tires for wood chopping now you would think yeah you know they are pretty toxic and things like that but they actually could have a really good use and what you're going to do is you're going to stack about two tires to three tires high and you're going to uh, stuff your logs inside of those and when you're axe splitting you hit the uh, wood it splits but it bounces right off the center the edges of the rubber and the perimeter and stays towards the center instead of flying out breaking your furniture or, or hitting you right in the shin right and then you start saying a lot of words you shouldn't have said so use tires use tires you can use them as a tree swing uh, you can use them for splitting wood 
Some people build actually earthship homes, they're called. You can actually build yourself a house out of these by pack, compacting dirt in the center of them. Uh, I have my problems with that, but you know, that's just my type of thing. But I've seen people growing, using them as planters to grow food out of, which also I have a problem with. The reason why I have a problem with tires, other than chopping wood or making a tree swing, is that if you do some little bit of research looking into, you'll see that the landfill where they, they uh, store tires, they have to scrape the dirt that was underneath them and place that into a uh, hazmat area. That's the juices, the rubber, the chemicals coming off those tires are so bad that they remove, I think it was like 10 feet of dirt where they, if, if tires were sitting in that dirt for a lengthy amount of time. So not something you really want to use. Uh, they are recyclable though if you, if you don't uh, find a use for them. Uh, if you, after you're done splitting wood or something, you figure out, you know what, I don't like these things, are unsightly. Take them over to the uh, tire store, they'll actually take them for free. And uh, don't forget guys, you can actually paint them if they are unsightly. You can make, paint them into something really nice. All right, dead tree branches, believe it or not. Believe it or not. I was sitting at a sushi restaurant and I saw somebody had this decorative uh, stainless steel vase, like this big old uh, planter. And what happened is they filled the whole thing up with uh, gravel and then there was this tree branch hanging out. And it was just a simply a dried tree branch. It looked like something, piece of like oak or uh, something. They stri All the bark was stripped off of it. What they did is they spray painted it silver um, and it was all shiny and everything. And it just had this, they put a certain light on it and it looked like a piece of artwork. Now, I don't know about you guys walking down the park sometimes, down by the ocean, uh, wherever you're at uh, in the mountains. You can find these, uh, these branches that have these really cool shapes, this really wicked looking, you know, branch. Take that home. Spray paint it gold, spray paint it uh, uh, purple, pink, whatever. Make some decorative uh, things out of it. Put it inside of a pot. Fill it up with some crushed glass or something. Anchor it down and sell it for like, you know, a hundred bucks. Or go to a restaurant and say, I've got uh, 10 of these I can provide for yourself. Or decorate your own house, right? Or just sell, start a little thing on uh, eBay. Uh, something for complete, for free. You can use something like that too. You can use a natural eco wood stain, which would be my first choice, and find the right type of shape with a couple horns off of it. And use it as a coat hat, uh, rack, right? And it looks pretty. It looks natural. The uh, natural wood preservatives uh, will keep the integrity of the wood grain and the color and everything and just turn it to a light like patina and save it from rotting. Uh, once I actually... Uh, went down to Sacramento, California for a, a friend gathering and there was cherry trees and apple trees all around us. And they had a big pile of stuff that got broken from winds and stuff like that. And if you've ever felt uh, the wood of cherry trees, it's super soft. It's so relaxing to carve. And I got myself a wood carving kit because I was going camping up there at the, the base of Yosemite and uh, out in the wild. Um, and I brought myself a couple of the branches that I actually carved a walking staff for myself. It had this big old knot on the, the top of it. And what I did is I actually carved a old man's face, a beard, and uh, the eyes, and you know, closed the eyes, and the mustache, and everything. Didn't really have much of a lips or anything. I just kind of carved the, the hair of the, of the big old flowing beard, and the, his hair all kind of, the back, the head hair. And uh, eyes closed, and there was a little knob where I saw where I could make a nose. And I carved this thing, whittling on it here and there, and I had so many people asking, uh, you know, where did you get that thing from, you know? And because it's cherry wood, it's really, really soft and just easy to uh, to shape almost anything you want. And I had somebody offer me a hundred bucks for it. I don't know why I said no. Uh, I guess I was just I was fancying. It took me so long. It took me like a day and a half to do it. But guys. Uh, if you got good enough, use a Dremel tool. You can probably carve these things out again and, and varnish them and stuff like that and sell them as well or just give them away as gifts. That's what I ended up doing. Uh, one of my friends uh, back then is no longer with us. Uh, uh, used to have a lot of old-timer friends, and he was in his uh, 90s, and he was having trouble walking and stuff like that. And he says, I could really use it, and I love that thing. I just gave it to him as a gift because it felt good. Um so yeah, I mean, so repurposing. The other one was driftwood. My idea was, and anybody can run with it, it's probably already taken, it was called driftwood dreams. And it was the exact same thing. I grabbed myself a Dremel tool. And what happens is if you're on the ocean or, or uh, by a lake, probably not necessarily rivers, is you're going to find petrified wood. And this wood has been sitting in the water for so long, it just hardened up. And so it's really durable. Uh, that's why you kind of, it's hard to carve. You can still carve it, but a Dremel tool works really, really good. And you can just make these little tiny pieces. And that was my idea. 
I always come up with these ideas and stuff. Like, what if I was living on the road? I was rubber tramping or leather tramping it, you know. Um, I'm sitting on the beach, right, and I found this driftwood, and I started making some carvings. And then uh, I just kind of lined up about three or four of them. And I asked people, uh, you know, I started walking down the beach, and I said, hey, uh, you guys uh, interested in buying some driftwood dreams? And they take a look at it and see that old man face, you know. One of them looked like a moon uh, with a sleeping face on it. And uh, I had some people tell me, yeah, I'll definitely buy that. I made like 20 bucks, right? It wasn't a lot. But if I made a bunch of these things, I'd be able to feed myself. If I made one a day, if I was a leather tramp, if I made two a day, if I was a rubber tramp, I've got gas in the gas tank and I've got myself my meals for the entire day, right? You could be living the easy life and being creative and actually doing something that's not harmful to nature or society. You can, and they're so small, you can actually start yourself a YouTube channel or, or a Etsy or something like that, eBay, and you can actually sell these things online if you got good enough and made a bunch. If you really want to get crazy, you can spray paint them gold, silver, and, you know, people, I would imagine, use some of these driftwood dream things. Like, like I mean, I found some guys that was intricate. Like, there was a hole in the center. It looked like a spider web. You can carve this thing into a crab, and somebody would probably use this thing as... Uh, something for their gecko in the aquarium to stand on pet stores and stuff like that so many many things you guys can do so many possibilities if you just have the mindset and the creativity to repurpose and see the value and uses in things my last one i have here is busted concrete uh i was on the reason why i brought this up is i was on a construction site and they were breaking up a whole foundation and what they had to do is bust up the concrete into big enough pieces to scoop up or for somebody to pick up uh, you know, scoop up with a backhoe or for a person to be able to pick these things up. You know, it's about a one foot uh, weird uh, dimension, right? They just crack it with a jackhammer. But this is like four inches to six inches thick. You can take these pieces and re and make a, a walking pass at your own home. Or you could re-piece the whole thing back together, fill in the centers with some cement, and you have this decorative and do some different color cements in between and make this thing look like natural stone. I mean, there's so many repurposing ideas. I could just go on and on and on, but I am running out of time here. <coughs> guys, if I brought you guys any value, entertained you, edutained you, please like and subscribe. Help me get the show going. The best thing that you can do is comment and share and that'll keep everything. That's what happens with the algorithms for all of these, for YouTube and, and all these other things. So if you guys like this sort of thing, check out the show on YouTube. There's a TikTok channel as well. Everything's in the show notes below. There's also a uh, email where you guys can give me suggestions, anything you want to hear on, anything I can improve on or share with me what your ideas on the subject matter. And as I always say, guys, go out there and have yourself a near-life experience. Don't lose your muchness. Carry on the fire. And human up, my friends.